They're making us feel so goddamn welcome tonight for running this. Fuck yes. I'll tell you what, man. Every time I play that song in Columbus, it, it fucks me up a little bit, you know? I'm sure it fucks you up in some ways too, man. And the whole time I was playing that song, I was thinking about Dime Bag. I was thinking about touring with Pantera twice and all the fuck out. Drinking way too much whiskey, man. Holy shit. So many shots. So it was just endless shots, and he was such a fun motherfucker. I'll tell you what, did I ever tell you the story about when he broke my guitar? He broke my guitar one night. So we played Kalamazoo this year. He gets shit face drunk after the show. I mean, it was a good time for a while. Him and his guitar tech, Grady, are coming up. They've got a gallon of Seagrams. They're just walking up behind people and pulling their heads back and pouring Seagrams into their mouth and shaking their heads. It was a good time for a while. And after a while, I was like, I gotta go to bed. And that show was in Detroit. A huge show. 12,000 people sold out. Biggest show at the tour. I wake up at about 5 a.m. and I look out the window. And Dimebag is still outside drinking with just like two people. And he's standing on top of a Volkswagen bug, completely stripped down to his underwear and his Chuck Taylor, just doing backflops <laughs> on the roof of this fucking Volkswagen bug. Anyway, I wake up the next day, I go to bed, I come up. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm walking off the bus. And as I'm walking off, so is Dimebag. And I'm like, hey man, how's it going? And he's just like, yeah. <laughs> he hasn't stopped drinking. He's been drinking for like 20 hours straight now. He's fucking wasted. And everybody's like, I walk in and all the Pantera crew comes up to me and they're like, don't give time back a drink or you're kicked off the fucking tour. I'm not doing nothing. I'm just, I'm just hanging here. Anyway, so the day goes on. He somehow finds alcohol. You pulling up a, are you pulling up a dime bag shirt? I can't see what that says, but if that's a dime bag shirt, right on. Anyway, suffice to say, he goes out and Cold Chamber is the opening band. And he comes out. <laughs> you like that? Cold Chamber is the opening band. And he goes out and he walks up on stage while Cold Chamber playing and he just starts air guitar. With and Des looks at him and he's like, oh, hey, everybody, it's dime bag. Daryl. The whole crowd, of course, goes crazy. Crowd goes crazy. And then he comes over to my side of the stage. And he starts looking at my guitar that's in my in my rack. And he kind of gives me this like cross-eyed look. And he goes and he puts my guitar on. The guitar is not plugged in, and he just walks back out on stage and he starts air guitaring with coal chambers. <laughs> Going for it, man. And Des is like, oh hey, it's a uh, dime bag Daryl again. <laughs> And he sits there at the end of the song, and he takes my guitar, and he goes... And he just smashes it on the ground. I'm like, motherfucker, I'm pissed, man. I got two guitars. He broke one of them, and then he walks off the other side. I'm like, whatever, I'm just gonna play the show. Anyway, this motherfucker comes out, plays a flawless show. Which, if I never would have seen it with my own eyes, I never would have believed it, because he was so hammered. Next day, he wakes up, super apologizing. I'm like, hey, man, you remember what you did last night? Do you remember? He's like... Uh, Fresh my memory. Broke my guitar. And like, oh fuck! He gives me like 500 bucks. Like, I'm sorry, man. Comes out and a couple of days later. He gives me a guitar on stage in Chicago. One of his dime bolts, the, the dime bolt, the blue, just come out with this. And I tell you what, man. You know, those are the stories that I remember when I think about dime bolt. All of those crazy. Moments. I don't think about Columbus, Ohio, man. I think about those moments, you know, I think about his smile, I think about doing shots with that man. I think about how much, I think about how much he loved Columbus, Ohio, and how much he loved Ohio, because we did like seven shows in Ohio. So I tell you what, man, you know, it's always comes back to music, right? It always comes back to music. The reason that Dimebag was such an amazing performer, guitar player, is because he was a die-hard fan. 
Van Halen was his favorite fucking band of all time. He was like, if you watch Van Halen, you'll see God. God. And, I'm like, and that's what it's about. You know? That's why we're here. We're not here standing on this stage because this is the cool thing to do. No, man. The four of us need to do this. We need to get all of this shit out of us. I'll tell you, man. When I look out into everybody's eyes, can see the same thing. Now, you're not here because it's the cool place to be. You're here on this cold ass rainy Sunday night because somewhere along your life, music came and it filled this hole inside of you. There's nothing else would. So tell you what, if you know the words to this next song, if you relate to what I'm talking about right now. I want you to feel free to sing the lyrics as loud, loud if you want to. Be louder than me if you want to. I don't give a fuck. You're not seeing that show, Ohio. 